excellence, black, black, excellence, black, black, excellence. I'm good, man. I'm blessed, bro. Where you, where you at right now? I'm in Vegas in my crib. Mm -hmm. How's life? In, how's quarantine life in Vegas, man? You know, no, you, you, uh, you never see with this much marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough out there. Everything shut down in the big city. Bright lights. Yeah, it's different, man. It's, it's just it's kind of weird. But at the same time, it's like a weird like positiveness to to everything being so slow. Um, that I think needs to be implemented. You know, once a year, I think to help quarantine like this to just to just uh, slow everything down. I think this did a lot of the stuff for the, the earth. The earth needs a break at some point, sometime. You know what I'm saying? Like anybody else needs a break. So um, I think some of the things that happened from this just gave us insight on the stuff that we never thought about, how we affect the earth and how us being moving, moving, moving all the time affects us and our families and our relationships and all types of stuff. So it's been cool. I ran on the strip. Um, uh, I, I did a like run for for Mott, for job for Mott um, on the strip, me and my boy. Uh, it was cool, it was early in the morning. Nobody was really out there. It's, it's just like- it's, Had the whole strip to yourself. Yeah, it's, it's cool though. It's, it's cool and it's weird at the same time. Man. Absolutely, man. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Tell people who you are, man. My, my name is Ricky Collins. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 15 years old. Um, music artist, manager. I, I run a label, uh, videographer, not videographer, but I own a, a production company. I do uh, more so editing, directing, setting up uh, productions making sure everything is planned out and executed properly. Um, I work with I, I work with Floyd Mayweather. I work with Eric Thomas, uh, handling production and, and media. Um, yeah, man, I uh, do motivational speaking. I've been, you know, travel doing motivational speaking a little bit too. Um, and now I, I, I just started a tech company. I don't know if you know about that. <laughs> I don't, I, man. What kind of tech company? I haven't put I haven't put it out yet. So this is honestly really my first time ever talking about this, like outside of just my my uh, my team. But um, yeah, we started a tech company called Packed House Live, um, built for digital events. But really, it's a social media social media platform for the entertainment industry that allows content creators to monetize their brand and audience direct to consumer. Um, so you've seen it, you've seen it kind of happening here and there with like Patreon does sort of something like that. OnlyFans, um, same type of concept, but uh, we just have noticed that these type of platforms don't have the, the, the swag, the look, the vibe, the energy that it needs to, to really transcend to a, a bigger audience and a bigger market. Um, and that's what we're trying to bring to it and bringing in uh, different resources that we have to make it one of the biggest things in the world. And one of the most important things for me is building infrastructure. I, I think a lot of times we, we miss out, or not even miss out, we don't even think about building infrastructure for ourselves when people get to a certain level. And that, that means platforms, that means banks, that means our own education, that means all that stuff as, as far as infrastructure goes. We don't stop and build it. We just make do with what's there. And I think that's a big issue for all of us because when I'm doing these numbers for for my, my company and the numbers that people are missing because they don't just stop and build the infrastructure and build up, um, man, it's, it's astronomical. So uh, I think this is gonna be a mindset change for the whole world to, um, to understand the value that we have as content creators in our content and in our audience. We, don't, we need to own our audiences and not give it away to these big platforms um, and yeah, that's what I'm doing, bro. And what's the name of it again? Packed House Live. Packed House Live, man. Well, How did you get from Minneapolis to Las Vegas, man? What's that story? So, um, so uh, I moved. I was living in Wisconsin for a couple of years, and I moved back to Minneapolis in 2015. Um, my brother Nino um, had just got a new camera. His mom bought him a new like Sony FS700, some real nice camera. Excuse me. So when I got back, I'm like, okay, he got the camera. I, I already know how to edit our direct and all that stuff. So I'm like, bro, let's link up and do some stuff. So we started, um, we started shooting videos for our own 
for New Wave. We started New Wave in 2015. We started shooting for our own artists, me and my sister, Quita Lachey, Kuzi Kerr. We started shooting for our artists. But then uh, also Lil James, you know, obviously you know Lil James from the North Side. He signed to Floyd. So we started coming out here to Vegas and just working with Lil James as much as possible, trying to build up his social media and was taking pictures. I don't know if he was following around that time, but you could see a big like boost in social media in that, in that 2015, uh, 2016 when we were around him. Um, and we, we were just running his stuff and flying back and forth as much as we could. We ended up getting fired from our jobs at Verizon. We both had jobs at different Verizon wirelesses, but we ended up getting fired from our jobs and we decided that um, we wanted to, we was gonna go hard for, for New Wave and try to, you know, we had an opportunity, we just need to keep pressing at it. And um, in 2016, in the summer, right before BET Awards, um, Floyd finally brought us on. So a whole year of that, of working, and Floyd finally brought us on, um, officially paid us to be on the team to run, do what we were doing for Lil' Jane. What that feel like for you, man, as an entrepreneur, as somebody who stepped out into the water, man, and tested the water out with your own brand, with your own gifts, with your own talents, man, what that situation feel like for you when that hit finally arrived at your door? Man, it was, it was crazy, man. I got so many stories. I'm gonna tell you the story, just so I'm trying to shorten it, um, just so you can get a kind of aspect of how we was feeling. So I had, we already, we in my mom's basement, you know, talking about this forever. And like we working, we working. And I would always say the money is there. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, in this situation, it's the, a billionaire. You know what I'm saying? This is before he was bringing up. Damn near a billionaire. Like we know the money is there. We just need to do what we need to do to be the greatest that we can. And and people pay for the greatness, so we we gonna get the money. We so that's kind of our thought process was. And we was working every you know every day hard on on trying to you know get to the next level. So that day when it finally happened, um, we were on our way to BET Awards. I remember we came to we came to Vegas. I mean, yeah, we came to Vegas probably a month before this, um, a little over a month before this. And somebody sent us off. Somebody told us to come out here, um, and they was going. This is a big video dude. He was going to take care of us. We had to get to his crib. He had a nice, had a mansion with the Bentley and all this stuff off of doing video stuff. He's like, yeah, come out to Vegas. I'm gonna work with y'all. I'm gonna help y'all out. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna make sure people always hit me up with videos and y'all can do them, but we just split the money type of thing. So we like, all right, bet. So we flew out here. We got out here, this man did not answer his phone bro, at all and had us stranded out. So Lil James was out of town too. So he was out with Floyd and we ended up being able to stay at James' house. And then we was just working on all the videos that we shot in Minnesota and just dropping. We dropped the Yaya No Fucks video. We dropped uh, Lulu, uh, What's his song? I forget his big video. He had Mac Herb, um, graduation video. Um, so we we dropped all that stuff while we were in that situation, right? We and we had been to the BET Awards on our own the year before. I think even one other time, maybe it was one time before that. I feel like it was two times we went to the BET Awards. Yeah, because we went 2015. Yeah, maybe, maybe only one time, but we went to the BET Awards. So it was coming up and we like, we telling Lil James like, bro, make sure we good. We want to go with you. Cause the other times we went, we had to, you know, get our own hotels and figure everything out. And, and we was out way past, outside of downtown. So we had to drive into downtown and just figure everything out. So we like, we, we, we want to be with you and make make sure we good. You know what I'm saying? So we was on it, we was on it, we was on it with, his, with the management, everybody. So now it's the day we packing up the car, putting everything in the car. And we we uh about to go to drive to LA. So um, as we about to drive to LA, the the president of the label, his name uh, Red, he calls. Well, he gets a call from Floyd, or he, or he calls Floyd. And he asks him to get a bigger truck, like get a truck. So we was in a car. We was literally packed in. We had all our stuff. So he um he got the phone and wherever, and we waiting for Champ. So then we started driving. We driving down the street. I live in the same neighborhood this all happened to, which is crazy. I, <laughs> I drive past these places all the time. But we start driving down the street and um and Floyd literally pulls up next to us out the blue in an all white, old school, all white uh bins. And it's just him with four girls in the car. And he looked over at us like, man, y'all gotta step y'all game. <laughs> so we laughing or whatever. 
we get to this um this gas station over here. He tells me to pull over to the gas station. So we pull over there. He had one of his uh his friends, Ricky Brazil, uh, he was getting some money from him. So Ricky put out this big wad of money out the window. The girl grabbed it. Lil James and Greg get out and talk to him. And we sitting in the car. So me and Nino sitting in the car. I'm like, I'm like, bro, they're gonna call us out, they're gonna call us out, they're gonna call us out. I already know. Like he's gonna call us out. So as soon as I'm saying that to Nino, I look up and they like. Floyd like turned around walking the other way and, and then they telling us to come on. So we like, oh shit, so we get out and we walk up to him and then, you know, we give him the, he always do the fist pump. So we give him the fist pump, like, what's up? And, uh, and yeah, he was like, man, I heard y'all, y'all nice with the camera work, you know? Pretty much like, I got y'all, take them to LA, you know, make sure they good until I get there and I got y'all, yeah, like, let's work, pretty much, I'm like, we hype, bro. We had no money, bro. Literally, zero dollars our name. We came out there with a little bit of money, but literally, bro, days before that, my, my ex-girlfriend, I couldn't buy her cookie dough at the damn. She wanted some cookie dough, two dollars. I couldn't buy her cookie dough at the damn grocery store. Like, days before this. And I was like, you know, feeling some type of way about it. It was weird. So, we get out there and, um, I got, this stuff is on YouTube too. Some of the uh, the recaps and stuff we get from there. It's on James. Or it might be on our ass, but it's on YouTube. Um, we got out there and we were able to finally stay in the hotel room. <laughs> we had a, we, it was so, it was funny because me and Nino had to sleep on the same bed and little James, little small ass had his own bed. <laughs> and we was just making it work. And um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to get to the end where we got money and I, I'll tell you how I so. So then we get to go to Floyd's penthouse downtown and it's like GTA, like you gotta go up one elevator to get to one floor, then you go walk over to another elevator to get up to, to the floor. And you looking out and you can see LA, it's all downtown. He he called us into his room and gave me, you know, ten thousand dollars. And I was and I'm like, man, we back to the room and we like I remember it was a time when we first started New Wave, bro. The first person that we got, first video that we got, I think we charged them I think we charged him three hundred dollars for the video. We ended up not even doing that video, but we ended up charging three hundred dollars. We gave him that money back, but charging three hundred, so they paid us half. So they paid us one fifty, and we split seventy five dollars. And I'm like, and when I told him at that time when that first happened, I'm like, one day we're gonna be splitting hundreds of thousands. We're gonna spend thousands of dollars doing this. And that was the first time that happened. So, man, it was a dream come true, um, to to say the least. It was just an amazing experience, man, to to be able to. Uh, you know, where we come from, it's not, you know, people don't have those type of stories in it. You know what I'm saying? I, when you work hard and you really believe in something, you know, it, it always happens for you. you. You stay believing. Like, and I, now that I understand kind of how energy works when you put, when you say certain things and you put certain energy into the world, I was doing that. I was all, saying all that. The, all that stuff matters, man. Uh, and it's crazy how it comes back because you might be just saying stuff just like, in the moment just because that's how you're feeling but you what? really putting it out into the world and then it really manifests in your life like i've seen it happen um, uh, so many times in my life it's crazy man everything you say out of your mouth has power man every word you write down man it has the potential of coming to life man so be cautious with your words man and as a quote man it's uh cost you nothing to be generous with your words man so 100%. It's, it's best to speak life over everything that you're doing in your life, man. So I appreciate that and I applaud that, man. Did that lead you to working with Eric Thomas or how did that relationship come about? So it's crazy thing that we, that's a good segue because the same thing me saying, saying it, it's crazy, bro. So um, I started, I always wanted to give back to my community. I've been like in my head for my whole life. I wanted to be, I didn't think like motivational speaking per se, but I know that I wanted to give back. And uh, I started, I got an opportunity to, to talk to kids in Maui, Hawaii, through this, this um, through Verizon in a, in a, uh, Innovative Learning. So that's where my motivational speaking stuff first started. So they hit me up. My, one of my friends actually, he worked he worked in uh, Maui at the school. He hit me up and he didn't even know what all the stuff I was doing. And so I'm telling him everything. He's like, oh my God, like, you got to talk to the kids. So. That's kind of started that, and I started talking to, to the kids, and I'm like, man, I need to do this more often. I need to like keep giving off my energy to kids and, and just the next generation in general to give them hope and give them confidence um, in themselves early. So um, 
So that got me in a motivational speaking thing. And I'm like, I want to do this. When I did that, I'm now I start researching. So obviously, we know Eric Thomas, uh, not know, know him personally, but we know who he is. And uh, I'm following him. He's posting stuff about his his um, nonprofit school days. He's posting about a nonprofit. So I looked that up. I followed him. They and they going to schools and they doing different things. And he was with a bunch of different guys. I tell Nino straight up, like, we need to get around ET, bro. That's who I need to be around doing this. They got this. He got the same type of vision as me. Same heart. You know what I'm saying? Same. We got the same type of thing going. Then literally, bro. <laughs> literally. Uh, I don't even know, it's probably seven or eight months later. Uh, Cause that, I said that probably in the beginning before January. So by almost around the summertime, that's that same little part, that, that by the summertime, ET was coming here to speak for the TNT football team. And I think he had something else and they set it up for him to speak for the football team. So they hit us up to come shoot it. So I'm like, oh snap, this is the opportunity. And I'm like, I've been wanting to get to Eric Thomas, this is a perfect opportunity. So crazy situation. We were shooting something else at the same time. So I had like, we had two obligations. So I had to like, it was weird because I had the black excellence hat that I wanted to give, give to him and all this stuff. And, but I had to be somewhere else so I couldn't actually go. So I dropped Nino off and he, they was running late. So this is what happened. So we drive up to his hotel, they running late. He come out, Nino hurry up and hop out. I had my black excellence hat, everything. I had all in my head, I'm like, what I'm gonna say. And they hop in the van and it was just fast. Boom, they gone. I had to hurry up and go to the other shoot. So now Nino is there by himself and he, he's in a sprinter with ET, uh, red, red and then the coach. And he's just in there and he's shooting. So they talking, and um, since he was the only photographer, videographer there, ET asked him, can he send him the video? So he gave him, he was gonna give him his email. But I had random, random situation. I had a connection with, uh, at the Tropicana, they do this print show, and I was cool with, I'm cool with the dude. He kind of mad at me now, because some business stuff didn't work out, but I'm cool with the dude that is Prince. You know what I'm saying? So I, I had to, I was going to the show, or I had just went to the show the day before, and they was telling ET about the show and saying we got tickets, and he was like, "Well, me and my wife would love to go if it's possible." And so he gave Nino his phone number. So, and the crazy thing is, the show was was wasn't even they wasn't gonna be back that next day. They wanted to be back to the. It was like a Thursday. They was supposed to be, he wanted to go. They wasn't even showing that day. They didn't show till Friday. So he couldn't even do it. But that since he gave Nino his number, the next day when we sent him off the videos and the pictures and stuff like that, we was at our other shoot and I got on Nino's phone and I text as Nino like, yo, um, you know, me and my brother would really love to meet you. We, you know, we we run a media and production for Floyd Mayweather. Um, you know, we were entrepreneurs, blah da da. My brother's a motivational speaker. He put out a song called Black Excellence that did this and the other. And we would love to meet you. He like, he like, for sure, let's make it happen. And he had us meet him the next morning at six in the morning <laughs> at the Hard Rock. And we went for a walk. And now I'm sitting at, now I'm, this is what I'm saying. I said I need to get around ET and it just, it happened like that. The next thing I know, I'm walking with him at six in the morning, just me and him and Nino shooting from, like walking behind us shooting. And I'm just talking to him about all the stuff that I'm doing. And he like, he was like, um, he like, yeah, I love what y'all are doing, but the, the, what I, how I got around him, because a lot of people are doing stuff. But I always, when I get around people, and this is a good gym for, for young entrepreneurs, you have to offer something. You have to offer something every time because you think somebody, just because you cool or you dope or you do this, that, and the other. You gotta add matter. value, man. It's a million people like that. So I already knew I had to offer something. So I'm like, anytime you're in Vegas on the West Coast or anything, let us know, we'll run your, your we'll do the your media stuff for you. And he, he like, he was telling us, I started asking him about who does his media, and he got a dope person, Nikki. Um, they, she on a company called Beast Mode. She's super cold, she's super cold, like crazy. She, she crazy. But they don't like traveling all the time. So I'm like, we'll travel, that's no problem. So he, so he came to, he would come to Vegas, he had like conferences. I think we went to that first conference he was out there for. The next day, we went there. And then every time he come to Vegas, he'll hit us up and we'll go to the conferences and do, you know, do his stuff. And then he started taking us to to uh, Cali. So then we'll go to Cali with him and, and, and go run his stuff 
And then next thing you know, now we going all over the country. <laughs> And then uh, he put us, and then the crazy thing is, school days, I even say this, so the school days, when I first seen that that Instagram, his, um, that's his nonprofit, his passion is, is education. He has a master's in education. So that's his passion project, his school days. But I DM'd him, and I, and I said, you know, said my piece, said who I was, said, you know, I wanna work with you guys, how can I work? And nobody wrote me back, right? So he put us with school days, and the next thing I know, I'm in Atlanta, and we're building out the next phase of the, that that nonprofit. And I'm sitting down with them and I showed them the DM when I DM them like a year ago and, and told them that I, you know, what I needed. So manifestation is real, but the other people, another thing people need to understand is they say, God will show you the way, but he not sometimes he's not just gonna give it to you. Like people think you say it, then it's just gonna be like poof. Eric Thomas just called my phone like, hey, I wanna work with you. No. You say it, and then an opportunity, uh, opportunity presents itself, and then you have to make action. Like that's where you step in. God will give you the opportunity because you said it, or the world will give you the opportunity because you said it and you put the energy out. But when that opportunity comes, you, you gotta be prepared. Have to make action. Yeah, you yeah. Be prepared, man. You can, miss it. you can miss it like in two seconds. If I wasn't thinking like that, I would have missed it, and that all that stuff would have happened. And now. You know, now I'm building my own platform. I have these relationships that I can, I can, you know, go into, and 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 now it benefits me in a different way because I was able to take advantage of those opportunities. That's dope, man. What what's next for you, man? Before we get up out of here, man. What else you want people to know about you? What you got coming up? What's next for Starbound and Ricky, man? And New the Wave. Next, the next thing, man, is it Packed House Live, man? Number one social monetization platform in the world. That's that's what I'm building right now. I'm working with top people in the world, man. And, and like I said, this is this isn't something that's just for money. Like it's not for money to me. Like I said, it's about building infrastructure. It's about um, us as content creators understanding the power of our audience. Stop giving your audience away. This a this a um, this a, a prime example with just music artists, right? So think of this as a, just a concept. So a music artists. Um, you get pop, get one song popping, everybody's listening to it. You're not signed to nobody. You're free to do your own stuff. You get, you get your own, you get your own little money for a little bit, and you got a million followers on on social media, right? How does it make sense for you to have a million followers on social media? You got your own buzz going to go sign to a label that is going to give you, let's say, three million dollars. That's a high level, right? Give you a three million dollar advance, let you put out your stuff, and but they own most of your, they own your publishing, they own all this stuff that you don't get to. We don't look at the long term; we just look at right now. Think of if, with Pack House Live, if an artist like that is popping, you can make you can make an account with us, and all you got to do is convert two percent of that one million over to subscribe to you or to to be able to monetize them directly. And that three million dollars won't matter to you as much, and that's the that's the difference. Is we look at these big platforms and big um, entities as our opportunity, but we're their opportunity, and that needs to be the thought process instead of they're our opportunity. You have the audience, you're their opportunity, and that's what it is. So at the end of the day, we need a place where we can monetize direct to our fans that are already there, that already like us. We don't have to get the whole million, we just got to get a small percentage to pay us because that million on Instagram is worth nothing. It's worth, I mean, it's worth like maybe getting a deal or maybe getting advertisers. Or, but at the end of the day, you don't really own that. You're kind of renting out that million followers from the, the platform. And that has, that's the, that's the concept that I'm changing. And um, that's what I'm on. And after that, you know, New Wave Records, Queen of Lachey, Koozie Kerr. Um, we building up my, my label. Um, and yeah, man, we just moving forward, trying to do amazing things, great things, coming back to Minneapolis and, and give back to the kids, um, give back to the, the, the community. I want to get into education. I want to give to education. Um, and yeah, I'm, my big thing is philanthropy, man. That's everything I have in my mind, I guess, for my future is to, to empower, empower people, inspire people, give opportunities, give information, 
give the, the resources to make things actually come to life. And that's, that's my future. That's what's up, man. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Is there any last bit, bit of advice, man, you'll give to somebody who was in a position that you found yourself in early in your life, man? What would you say to yourself 10 years ago right now? Man, keep believing. Keep believing. Keep seeking knowledge. ET say knowledge is money. Get you some. Keep seeking knowledge. The last thing, if you're an entrepreneur, is what I learned in this process of me building this company is... <clears throat> we have to we've been doing business wrong bro for a long time like we I mean, I, that's something I'm talking to my, for myself I, but a lot of people like this like where we come from is we hustlers so we like we we trying to we see an opportunity we see something we, we hop on it we figure we just know that we can figure it out in the long run but how business is really done man is you stop you figure out what you actually want to do. You write that down. You figure out the numbers. You take your time to figure that stuff out. You link with the right people. You take your, put your energy there first. Your hustler's energy, put it into making the best business plan, the best projections, the best that you can do. To, like marketing plan, all that stuff. The best that you can do. Best PowerPoint, best business plan. Instead of just going out and doing it. Because when you move like that, you, you don't need money to get money. And I think that's the process that I always had. I always knew I wanted to be in tech since I, I was young. But I was like, okay, I gotta make music. I'm gonna get rich from making music. Then I'm gonna get in tech. And I'm like, damn, that's not working. I'm gonna manage these artists and then I'm gonna make my label pop, get money. Then I'm gonna get into tech. And I'm like, okay, I'm with Floyd. Maybe we're gonna do a movie or we're gonna, I'm gonna get a show, I'm gonna, like produce a show, you know, sell it or whatever, run it for whatever, get the money, then get into tech. But that's not the thought process. That's not the right thought process. All I had to do, I had an amazing idea. All I had to do is take the time, get the reach the people to help me and build out an amazing PowerPoint. A PowerPoint and some projections in the business plan that's all laid out perfectly. It took me a month and a week. And now I have an asset that's worth $60 million. That's the difference where you can that's leverage, you know what I'm saying? That's how you do business. So for artists, for example, just to say artists, a music artist doesn't, it, for me, I think it makes more sense if you decided, okay, I want to put out an album. All right, this is exactly what I want the album to be about. Like, this is what I want it to be like. This is what I want it to feel like. These kind of videos that I want to do, these people I want to work with, this is how much it's going to cost to do it. This is how much it costs to market. This all this, all this, all the things that you can think of that to make, make that album come to life the way that you see it in your mind. And you take that and you go to people and give them equity or loans or however you want to do it to to get the money to, to actually do what you want to do the way that you want to do it. Instead of just hustling and doing it, then we don't do no marketing. We don't do not, we don't do it the right way because we ain't doing business the right way. We hustling and trying to finesse it and figure it out when business is not to be finessed. You do it the right, you build it out. Cause now you can, if an artist came to me with a business plan or to you with a bit, you've never seen it. If an artist came to you with a business plan all the way, like this is what I want to do. Like, I'm be, and I'm looking at it like, you got you got some followers, you got some set up where it's like, hmm, you got this right influence that you want, you talk to them, they got, you got the numbers and I'm looking at everything. I'm like, yeah, this makes sense. But if it, we don't do that and that's the missing piece. Stop just hustling, man. We have to learn how to do real business. Or, or we're gonna be running in circles forever. And that's the information that I'm learning, man. These people, I don't wanna say white people, <laughs> but these people in general, these people out here that are really getting to the money, when you walk into a Target, when you walk into any of these big companies, all it took was somebody had an idea about a Target and they, they wrote that stuff out and they built that out and they went to investors and they, the investors believed in their idea and they gave them money to actually make it happen. There it goes, man. I appreciate your time again, man. I look forward to your vision coming to life, man. And let's stay connected. Uh, let's continue to build, man. And I wish you all the best, brother. Appreciate you, man. Absolutely.